it is a team sport for the visually impaired classification. Um, we have to work together. We probably should like each other because you're tied together a lot. <laughs> so, um, you know, and um, it's, it's not easy. It's learning how to communicate so that it works for both of you, um, knowing how to motivate both of you at the same time. Um, and just actually being willing to be that vulnerable in front of somebody else. Like you are so, I, and you know this, you're so far into the hurt locker that like when you're by yourself, it's, I don't know, for me, I felt safer going there um, when I was, when I was swimming. Like, I mean, especially in swimming, your face is down in the water and nobody really gets to see your pain face as much. I think like, uh, I think I was about 13 years old. I went to the Paralympic trials just to watch. Um, they were being held in Indianapolis, Indiana for track and field. And um, I saw all these athletes and I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. There's so many people like me. Um, and I was able to talk to some of the athletes and, and they were like, why aren't you, why aren't you competing? Like we need more female athletes. We need more people like to represent our country. Accepting a significant change can be, can be really hard. What I found is um, like everyone can kind of tell or give you an idea of the, the physical change and how to adapt physically, but no one really gave me a manual to deal with the whole emotional side of things. And um, yeah. being 17, you sort of, I suppose, have like a level of arrogance where you're like, yeah, like life, this is what I'm going to do with my life. And this is, these are the things I really like doing. I'd never worn a prosthetic as a kid, so I was not used to this at all. And trying to control the bike with a prosthetic that was slipping all over the place and just felt like it was this random thing on the end of my arm, which I had no control over, was actually not the right thing for me. And um, so I completely changed what I was using and actually am now pretty much attached to the bike because I found that for me, I have a lot more control. I definitely wanted to win in Rio, like winning world championships the year before. Um, so that was obviously the goal, but, you know, Martin was just better than me on the day. Like I, you know, trained well going in and I, you know, gave everything I had on the day and it just wasn't meant to be. So, um, and I think I came off the bike in like fifth or so place and I had to run myself and really earn that silver medal. So, you know, it wasn't like I lost the gold. I think I won the silver. I'd love to be sitting here and, and say like, oh, I watched the London 2012 Paralympics and because of that, I wanted to be a Paralympian, but um, I actually didn't. I, I watched them and I watched athletes compete and I thought it was really cool. I did think it was cool. Um, it was awesome. But it, it, it kind of taught me like a, a valuable lesson about inspiration as well is that it's, it's not something that you get to choose. Most of the time, it, it's something that will find you. My dad was my handler for, for a few times and then he decided he didn't want to be my handler anymore. Apparently it's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> my dad has been my handler before too and I just get stressed out when he's my handler. Okay, so the completely blind uh, triathletes have to wear blackout goggles and I think, as I understand it, it's to make sure that you actually are in fact completely blind <laughs> um, because we get a... Um, uh, time advantage because we're racing other athletes who have um, some usable vision um, which actually does um, it's, it's just the nature of it, it just changes it right? Um, so they we wear the blackout goggles during the race to make sure that we all can't actually see <laughs> um, and then in the water we wear um Mine is just a piece of shock cord with two loops on the end and one end goes around my thigh and then the other end goes around my guide's thigh. And to be honest, I actually think the swim is the hardest because there's no talking at all. Um, because if we're talking, we're not going fast enough. <laughs> so um, it's learning to like feel your guide's body without actually swimming on top of them and yeah. which becomes tricky if it's wavy or you know there's there's if there's turns we've worked out um you know a right turn hit me twice a left turn hit me once like that kind of stuff so you kind of work that stuff out ahead of time so 
So I have um, six different prosthetics that I use with uh, throughout, I guess, a, a, a week in my life. Um, I have a few different ones for running, uh, depending on the distance and how fast I'm going. Um, each blade works differently for the speed. I've seen many, uh, I see, I've seen more and more people going to para triathlon, especially uh, since uh, the time uh, they announced uh, that para triathlon will go at the Paralympic Games. So many people uh, want to to come to para triathlon and now uh, the level and the, 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 the field is very, is more consistent. And I, it's always been something I wanted to give to try, um, particularly as I was a runner as a kid. Um, so then there was a suggestion of a talent transfer program, and I was really, really lucky that I got given that opportunity and switched across. And it is amazing. It was a massive, massive step outside my comfort zone. You know, I, I learned so much about myself in that in that first year. And yeah, I remember that first race thinking, what on earth am I doing? Why? This is so painful and it's so long and I'm just hating every minute. And then, you know, at the end of it, I was like, I want to go again. That was great. And you, you, you forget the pain, don't you? And then the next race, you're like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Okay. But you keep going. Going into the fondest memory was probably winning in Rio. Um, it was just an incredible race. When I first started, Bill was obviously like the world champion and kind of the benchmark. And um, to his credit, the level that he operated at in his time, it sort of pulled the rest of us up. It was kind of like, well, this is what's possible, possible, possible.